In this tutorial, I will guide you through setting up your development environment for Flutter on Linux. I will be demonstrating this on Linux Mint, which is based on Ubuntu. This means that if you're using Ubuntu or any Ubuntu-based distro, the instructions will be almost identical. For those on different Linux distributions, there might be minor variations, but you will still find this guide useful as the fundamental steps remain the same. The first step is to launch a web browser and navigate to flutter.dev. Once there, click on Get Started and select the Linux option. Then scroll to Method 2 for manual installation and download the package by clicking the Provided button. Although installation method 1 allows for installing Flutter via Snap, I find manual installation more reliable based on my experience. Not all Linux distributions come with Snap support out of the box. After downloading, double-click the file to extract the package. Open the extracted folder and go into the bin directory. You will find the Flutter executable. You will need to add this to your path environment variable to run Flutter commands from any directory on your system. To do this, open the .profile file in your home directory for editing. I will use Beam for this purpose, but feel free to use any text editor of your choice, including your system's default graphical editor. At the end of the file, add the following line pointing to the Beam directory you just visited where the Flutter executable is. Remember. Your download location might be different from mine, so ensure you enter the correct path. Next, you will need to apply the changes you have just made by using the source command followed by the file name to reload it. If you have done everything correctly, typing Flutter into your terminal and pressing enter should give you some output. If you get an error saying that Flutter can't be found, double check that you've entered the correct path in the .profile file and that you have used the source command to reload it. Finally, run Flutter Doctor in the terminal. This command will assess your setup and highlight any missing elements with red or yellow indicators, which you will need to address to complete the installation successfully. Continuing to the next step, you will be installing Android Studio and the Android SDK. This is advisable even if your preference is to use VS Code for Flutter development, because you will still require the Android SDK and the ability to use virtual emulators. Start by visiting developer.android.com-studio and hit the Download Android Studio button. Agree to the terms and conditions to initiate the download. After the download is complete, unzip the file. In the unzipped folder, go to the bin directory to find the studio.sh file, which launches Android Studio. Right click on it, select Properties, go to Permissions, and confirm that execution permission is granted. Double click studio.sh and choose Run to begin the installation. When prompted about sharing diagnostic data, it's your choice to contribute as it doesn't influence the setup. Click Next. Opt for the custom installation to tailor the setup to your needs. Pick your desired UI theme, hit next again and this time deselect the Android Virtual Device option. We will cover how to set up one later. Proceed with next. Accept all the license agreements and after one final next, click finish to wrap up the installation. With Android Studio now installed, you can click on this icon and select Create Desktop Entry to establish a system shortcut. Click OK and close the window. Reopen Android Studio using the new shortcut. 
you can right click on its icon and pin it to your taskbar, making it more convenient for future access. Now, you're going to create a sample Flutter app to verify the installation. Navigate to a directory of your choice and execute flutter create flutter underscore test underscore app, as you see on the screen. Next, launch Android Studio and open the project you have just made. If prompted to confirm if you trust the project, answer yes. Head to File, then Settings and click on Plugins. Search for Flutter to find the Flutter plugin and select Install. Agree to any terms if asked, and once the plugin is installed, click on Restart IDE to reboot Android Studio. Return to your terminal and perform another Flutter doctor check. It's likely to indicate that the command line tools are installed. To resolve this, go back to Android Studio and click on the button with the gear icon. Then select SDK Manager. In the SDK Tools tab, look for the Android SDK command line tools and check its box. Hit OK to proceed and OK again. After the installation wraps up, click Finish. Running Flutter Doctor once more should show that the command line tools issue is fixed, but you might still see a warning about Android licenses. To accept the Android licenses, execute the command flutter doctor dash dash Android dash licenses. You will need to type the character Y and hit enter to agree to each license. After doing so, if you run flutter doctor once again, the license warning should no longer be present. Next, you will create a virtual Android emulator, also known as Android Virtual Device or AVD. Click on the AVD Manager icon to open the Configurator. Select a device model to use as a template for the screen size and density. This doesn't impact any other setting. I'm opting for the Pixel 5 due to its manageable size. Hit Next and you will need to choose an API level for the emulator. I'm going with API 34, but feel free to choose any other, preferably not too outdated. Download the necessary system image by clicking the corresponding download button and, once it's done, close the dialog with Finish. Continue by clicking Next. Review the configurations. I'm setting the emulator to start with a cold boot for personal preference due to issues with hot reboot in the past, but you can leave the defaults as is. Click Finish and then start the emulator by hitting the Play button. If everything has gone well, you should be able to launch the app. First, try it from the terminal within Android Studio. Click on the Terminal tab and enter Flutter Puff Get to fetch all the app's dependencies. If you get an error saying the Flutter command can't be found, like it just happened to me, it's likely because the system hasn't recognized the changes to the .profile file. Solve this by sourcing the .profile file again. Then execute Flutter Run. If all goes well, the test tab should launch in the emulator. The next thing you should try is to run it from Android Studio. In my case, I could do it since Android Studio is already recognizing that this is a Flutter project, but this is not always the case the first time. If in your case you do not see the main.dart file indicated here, close the emulator and click on File. Select Invalidate Caches dash Restart and click Invalidate and Restart. This action can also be a general fix for future high caps with Android Studio. After Android Studio restarts, reopen the emulator and press the play button to confirm that the app runs smoothly in the AVD. You're about to set up the environment for web deployment. First, ensure you have Google Chrome installed. If you do, running Flutter Doctor should not give you any errors, unlike the issue I encountered. If you're error-free, you can skip ahead using the navigation markers below the video. If you need to install Chrome, visit the download page and select the right package for your system. For me, it was the Debian.dev file, which I installed by double-clicking and selecting Install Package. After installing, I run Flutter Doctor again to confirm the error about Chrome not being installed is resolved. 
Then head back to Android Studio, select Chrome Web from the device's dropdown and hit the play button. If everything went well, the application should run in a new instance of Chrome. The final step involves setting up the environment so that your Flutter app can run directly on your desktop. First, ensure that you have all the necessary dependencies installed. You can check the screen for a list of the required dependencies, and I will also provide this command in the video description. Please verify that you have installed all the dependencies before proceeding to the following step. Return to Android Studio and select Linux Desktop from the device's drop-down menu. Hit play and you should see the test application launch and operate like a desktop application. To wrap up this tutorial and as an extra tip that you might find handy, navigate to the Android SDK installation folder and within the platform tools directory, you will find a program called ADB. This utility allows you to install APK files directly onto an Android device. It's beneficial to add this directory to your system's path so that you can execute these commands from any location on your board computer. To add it to the path, follow the same steps you previously used to include the Flutter path, but this time for the platform tools directory. Open up the .profile file and append the following line pointing to the platform tools folder I've just mentioned. Apply the changes by running source on this file, and if all goes well, you will be able to use ADB commands. For instance, if you have an app named app.apk, you could install it by executing adb install app.apk. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you're interested in learning more about Flutter, feel free to click on the video displayed on the screen. In it, I will guide you through a detailed step-by-step -step process on how to use Flutter effectively. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Goodbye.